I hope you got your shitting pants on. Because you are about to shit your pants. Yeah, like a, mama. a jelly donut? I'm your huckleberry. You're not looking at the big picture. You're not looking at the big picture. Something wrong with his medulla oblongata. <laughs> sergeant and if you're listening that must mean you fancy another go well anyway um i have something pretty interesting to talk about this week and it kind of crosses a line <laughs> uh, not really a line but uh, it's it's basically uh, photography related but it so ties into politics and i don't know if anybody else or anybody else podcasting is common this this topic but i'm going to so here we go, brother. Brother! Um, I don't know if anybody remembers, which I'm sure they do. I mean, that's probably a bad statement. During the 2016 presidential election, there was um, a lot of talk about Donald Trump uh, making a statement some time ago. Um, and I was told it was basically locker room talk. So you'll have to excuse me a bit this week, people. My voice is not. I'm kind of losing it. But... Donald Trump had, uh, you know, allegedly, and I say allegedly because I didn't hear him say it, and I don't think it was ever recorded, but there was people that said he said it, and maybe even the Donald said he said it. Who knows? But he made a comment uh, in locker room talk that basically said, uh, you know, grab him by the pussy. And, uh, well, that seems, you know, quite uh, harsh, but... And and I don't know what context it was originally set in. I just know that people really made a big deal out of it, and it was really stupid. I thought it was very stupid, um, and especially with some of the comments that were were made to me personally about it, because it was such a hot talking point. But I remember um, one person actually saying, you know, how how am I supposed to tell you know my child that we elected you know, we elected a president that made that type of comment about women. Well, all right, first thing that comes to mind, you know, how are we supposed to tell our children that that we, the people, elected somebody who would make a statement like, a statement like that? You know, all I can really say is, bitch, please. Bitch. All right, because first off, I've been, you know, privy to conversations that women have. And I know that a lot of times um, they are more raw than men are when when you get a bunch of the cackling hens together. Um, and that probably will piss women off. Maybe I don't know. It's not men to. It's just, you know, an old adage that, you know, men used to say all the time that women get together and they cackle like a bunch of hens, you know, gossip and all this other crap. But I thought it was quite ridiculous, okay, for... You know, that statement to be made to me when, if you look back in history at some of the things that some of the past presidents have said, I don't think that what Donald Trump says was really all that bad. But then again, you know, it's a matter of opinion. So with the, with this all being the case, um, here's where it crosses over into photography this week. Ten women from Vermont participated in the Grab Them by the Ballot photo shoot titled after President Trump, infamous, Grab Them by the Pussy. Um, all of the women who came in all sizes and sexualities posed with nothing but a ballot placed on their private parts in an homage to the Me Too movement. Okay, The Me Too and We Too movements and recent confirmation of Brett Kavanaugh, they feel that there's so much at stake in the upcoming elections. And that was part of their mission state. Um, the women say that they are here to show the country these recent, these recent events have served to strengthen our resolve to bring about change within the system through exercising our right to vote. We aim to encourage voter turnout in the upcoming November elections. Now, 
Harvard Law-educated attorney Don Robertson, who organized the shoot, told The Sun that the project was aimed at encouraging people to vote for Democratic candidates and oppose the Republicans. Okay. Once again, opinion. Uh, my question is, why? All right. Have women been mistreated by Republicans here recently? Um we can we can bring up some talking points about when the Democrats were in power, some of the things that they did to women, um, especially with health care. Like, if you like your health care, you can keep your health care. Tell me how that all worked out. Um, what the big complaint is, is what Republicans are doing to transgender rights. The way they are attacking women's reproductive rights and the collective trauma means that women are really coming to the forefront now, she said. I hope that the pictures encourage women and marginalized communities to vote. I want them to know their voice matters. A Jewish transgender woman who goes by the initial Z took part in the shoot to point out how the transgender community suffered under the rule of Republicans. Now, or something I want to point out. This woman, Z, <laughs> she's not that old, okay? Um, maybe she's like 20, 22. Let's see. Um, Barack Obama was in office for eight years. Um, let's think about this for a minute. So a 20-year-old woman would have been 12, 12 years old, okay? And I don't know too many 12-year-olds that are really into, well, let's give her the benefit of the doubt. Let's say she was 14. Most kids at 14 years old, they don't give a damn about politics. Is that a fair statement? I think so. But this is what she says. They've suffered under the rule of Republicans. Um, I think that's a flat out lie. I think it's bullshit. <laughs> uh, Donald Trump's administration is aggressively trying to define transgender, intersex, and gender non-conforming people out of existence. Okay? That's not true either. Uh, they're optimistic that the photo shoot will serve as a starting point for women to claim their bodies. Okay? Uh, I don't think that there's anybody, any men, that are trying to take their bodies away. Um, the Trump administration recently came under scrutiny amid reports it's considering a rollback of Obama-era regulations and protections that broaden the definition of gender. Okay, I have nothing against what what we would you know, define as transgender people, okay? You know, a chick with boobies and a dick, okay? That's... There, there was another word for it, and I can't remember what it was, or vice versa, and I know it sounds like I'm being, but, um, okay, you know, these transgender people, um, I don't understand it all. I don't pretend to know everything there is to know about it. I know that, let's see, I think they used to call them hermaphrodites. Um, you know, when I was growing up, that's, that was the term, um, but you're hearing more and more about these now. And let's wonder what that is. You know, I mean, we could define that. We could talk about, it. um, I think it's a, it's, a, it's an interesting topic and one that should be explored. But like I said, I, I would say that in the biblical sense of things, the whole transgender thing is a, do I dare say it's a deformity, you know, in genetics? I mean, is there actually, you know, a transgender um, sex? You know, you got men, women, and transgender. All right, is that what is that how we should look at it? I don't know. I'm asking you people. I think that you people should be, you know, telling me because I I have no idea. I'm going off of you know what I'm reading here with this story, and I don't know if I if I'm buying into it. Okay, it's. It's interesting. So if anybody has any feedback on this, um, you know, you people should probably email the show or, you know, contact all Western news and, and leave a message uh, because it's an interesting topic to me. You people! So you, you people need to get off your ass and, and actually do this, okay? So <laughs> um, I'm to understand that the Department of Health and Human Services is reportedly looking into establishing the legal definition of sex under Title um, Nine as a biological immutable condition determined by genitalia at birth 
if the change goes ahead, uh, supposedly it's around 1.5 million Americans who identify as transgender could lose some legal protections. Um, I really don't have an opinion on that yet. I, I would want to learn more about the subject. But it says the midterm elections will take part next week on Tuesday with, with pollsters indicating that Democrats have a considerable chance to retake the House, though Republicans are likely to increase their Senate majority. Um, yeah, tomorrow's a big election day, people. You know, I'm, I'm kind of reading some of the comments that, that are being placed, you know, re- regarding all this. You know, some people say that this looks like desperation. Uh, some people really don't see the big deal here. These women aren't exposing any more skin than I expect to see on a beach in America. You know, there's there's talk about the Democratic Party being self-destructing in one person. If Maxine Waters posed and I saw it, I would probably never look at a woman the same way again. Uh, politics. But anyway, I wanted to talk about that for a minute. You know, there's, there's a very, there's, there's several, you know, sites that you can go actually see the photograph on. Fox News had something. It's uh, interesting. It's very, they've done all sorts of things. Several different photos. The one that I found the most interesting, the women were American flag in the background. And they're standing in kind of a triangle shape. And, you know, the ballots right in front of, right in front of their, their genitalia. Interesting, uh, interesting photograph. And I'm looking at it technically. I don't, um, I, I don't know the photographer. It doesn't say it. It basically says, uh, courtesy of John Schreiner, but grab him, grab him by the ballot and Sasha Goldstein. Kind of interesting. Really. Uh, I don't know. Uh, I have some, some, some technical you know, concerns with the photographs that were taken. The woman in the very front, you can see her eyes. You can actually see all their eyes, but to me, partially underexposed. Just, just my personal opinion. There's another photograph, same women holding all I'm going to assume that me. interesting topic though. There's there actually, there's actually several photographs. I'll tell you where you, where you can look at them, and I'll try to put these in show notes. Uh, www.7daysvt.com, uh, Vermont photos. Uh, grab them by the ballot. Probably the easy way to do it is just look on. Yeah, I find it very. Hmm. Well, I guess the way you got to look at it, some women feel. Represented very well. Trump admittedly, it seems to be transgender. Well, that's too bad. That's, I've been kind of watching the news about, you know, some of that Trump is doing for Apparently, I guess none of that really matters. Uh, oh, well, what are you going to do? That's, um, that's life. That's life. You, you roll with the punches. All right. I'm going to take a little break here. Maybe we'll talk a little bit more with this. A few years ago, ideas that we talked about were thought to be fringe ideas, radical ideas, extremist ideas. Those ideas are now mainstream. I, I, I just don't even know why there aren't uprisings all over the country. And if you see anybody from that cabinet in a restaurant, in a department store, at a gasoline station, you get out and you create a crowd. Do something about your dad's immigration practices, you feckless What's Uncle Tom but for white women who disappoint other white women? One way you get rid of Trump is a crashing economy. So please, bring on the recession. When was the last time an actor assassinated a president? I have thought an awful lot about blowing up the White House. Yeah, think about all that before you uh, you go and vote this year. Um, crazy, just plain crazy. Um, I just voted. Um, today is the election day. Uh, that's why I played that little break for you and decided to, uh, you know, tell everybody. Yeah, today's the day. Today's the day I voted. Um, unbelievable politics. Um, so let's kind of talk a little bit more about this photo today. Um, <laughs> my, my phone is, is, uh, you know, blowing up here today. Um, it's, uh, you know, people asking about the elections. Um, some people, which amazes me, a lot of millennials, um, they don't even know what the elections are for. Uh, that's, that's incredible to me. Um, 
it's it's crazy um anyway uh so i'm i'm doing a little response here uh you know while i'm in the midst of all this uh, but anyway uh let's um let's talk about this this uh photo for a minute um i might have mentioned it earlier in the program that you know i i, I understand the photo i i respect the photo i mean everybody's got a right to their opinion but from the standpoint of the photograph um the photograph sucks um if you're gonna make a statement you know you, you really want to make a you know a statement and and the photograph is just uh it's not technically done well my opinion only now, some people would choose to disagree with that um irregardless of of you know what side of the fence you're on you know the left or the right um it's important to get out and do the voting today. So hopefully, uh, hopefully, uh, people will think about the year in politics and, uh, let their voices be heard. So, um, I talked earlier about, uh, you know, the, the whole photograph and, and why they did this and grab them by the ballot. The campaign, you know, was, um, basically to, exercise rights for transgender or, you know, identifying, you know, people who identify themselves with something else. Um, look, all right. So, so there is, you know, a, a third type of sex here. Okay. Uh, what do we call it? That's, I think that's what needs to be defined. Um, are these, are these, uh, people, people? And yes, they are. Um, they should be treated, uh, the same as everybody else, and they should have rights. Um, I don't know if it's a physical birth defect, um, or maybe that's just the natural order of things. I, I, I don't know. I think it's a, it's worth having a discussion. Um, I find that all very interesting. Um, you know, I mean, it, you can joke about it all you want, but you know, realistically, it's it's a uh, you're born a man or you're born a woman, and and now for whatever reason, it seems that you can be born both. Um, something that, you know, I don't profess to understand, uh, but I think, uh, you know, I would like to educate, educate myself on that topic and, and see what's what. Um, and no, I'm not some kind of a freak. Uh, well, maybe I am. I don't know. I'm just basically saying that, uh, you can understand, um, you know, sometimes boys are born boys and they wish they were girls and, um, you know, who's going to knock? Well, everybody knocks, but... You look at Bruce Jenner and Caitlyn, you know, the transformation to Caitlyn Jenner. I will never understand that. Um, I don't think I need to. It's to each his own. So um, just because somebody decides to go in and have their, you know, pecker surgically removed does not um, does not make them less of a person. Uh, but I, th I think the big thing with all this is the lies. You know, it seems that both political parties tell lies and, um, you know, the people from the left, they just became unhinged and they believe everything, uh, you know, that the media puts out there. And I don't see anywhere where there's an agenda to cut these people out of their rights or take away their health care or do anything like that at all. So I'd like to know what the real problem is. Um, there's some something I'd like to talk about. Uh, you know, still goes into political. And, and of course, this photograph made me talk politics this week. <sighs> Candidate here in New York, Nate McMurray, he's running against um, Chris Collins. And Chris Collins is, you know, been indicted for insider trading. Um, I don't know what's going to come out of all that. But um, there was a lot of talk about Nate McMurray, um being a Hillary Clinton supporter, uh, being an Andrew Cuomo supporter, um, you know, he would vote to take away your second amendment rights. Um, and all I can really say in the whole topic is, um, the Republicans, they didn't do a very good job here, uh, looking for a replacement candidate for Chris Collins. Chris Collins, uh, never really got out of the election. He stayed in the election. And I'm afraid, uh, when you look at the lesser of two evils, um, Collins is going to win this election. Um, that's just an early prediction. Anyway, um, I could be wrong, but I do want to come right out and say that uh, I heard an ad by Nate McMurray where he had said that he's been smeared you know, by the Collins campaign. Um, he supposedly supports the Second Amendment, our rights, keeping bare arms. 
claims that he's, you know, from Western New York, um, you know, which I'm, I'm sure he is. But, you know, at the end of the day, uh, well, I guess we will see what happens later tonight or tomorrow. We're going to find out where these midterms go. So that's going to kind of define the the direction of the country. I think it's a red wave, um, but I've been wrong before. Okay, that's about all I have to t- talk about this week. Um, you know, uh, really don't have much to say. It's just me. I did want to talk about that photograph, and I did. <laughs> I got that out of the way. So, people, hope you enjoy the show. We will we will catch up with everybody next week. Out. <laughs>